and make sure that the recording has started. Okay, we're recording. So uh, if there's any connectivity issues that you'll still be able to, to access this, uh, uh, if, if there are any, any internet issues or connectivity issues, and you need to see what we're doing with the mini projects. Okay, so let's head over to, well, I guess before we jump to the mini projects, um, maybe I should ask if there are any questions on any of the material or homework, um, besides from section 4B, which we will be covering a little bit today. And you can either use audio or type it in chat. I know there is a little bit of a delay, so I'm keeping my eye on chat in case there are any questions. You might still be typing, um, but I'm not seeing any questions, not hearing any questions. So we'll go ahead and let's uh, jump to webcam, uh, to Pearson, web campus, yeah, not Pearson. And let me pull up as well the chat here so I can keep my eye on that in case any questions do pop up. Yeah, all right, and we are section 1016. Let's go into the student view. All right, so this is more or less what you should see on web campus. And we'll go to quizzes. Uh, this is where our um, mini project quizzes are. And uh, you'll notice that two have been added, uh, the chapter three mini project and chapter four a mini project quiz. Uh, this should actually probably be for A and B, but that's all right. We'll, we'll not worry too much about the, uh, about the title. So let's look at chapter three then. So chapter, uh, the chapter three mini, mini project quiz, um, what we're going to be doing is, is we're going to look at a hypothetical class um, and uh, given the, uh, this breakdown of the uh, grade categories and uh, a student's performance to look at uh, calculating what their final grade in the course will be. Um, so again, this is a hypothetical situation. So below we have grade categories and their weights. So take for example, homework is 10% of the grade for this class, uh, this hypothetical class. Uh, the mini projects are 10%, project one 10% and so on. And then in each category, we have the students, um, score, so they got 95% on their homework average, 92 on their mini project average, and so on. Um, so in order to calculate their final grade, what we're going to do is we're going to think of, uh, you can think of the final grade as being a uh, score out of 100, 0 to 100 points being uh, representing the 100%. And uh, the uh, weight of the grade category combined with a student's score will give you a certain amount of points that they earned for that grade, grade category. So take for example for homework, uh, homework is 10% of their grade and they got a 95. So we wanna take 10% of 95. And as you remember, when we want a percent of a number, we change that percentage to decimal form. So that's 0.1 times 95 to get the 9.5. That is uh, listed here in the instructions. Um, you can see that here. And that will give you the amount of points they earned for that uh, category in the grade. Uh, adding these all together, including the 9.5, and once you calculate these, um, these points earned for each, each category, that will give you the overall grade, which is there in percentage. So you add all of those up, it's going to give you a score between zero and 100. And again, you can, that is their percent, their final percent grade. So you can think of that as uh, they're grade out of 100%. Um, we could take this a step further. I didn't uh, for this particular quiz, but we could take this a step further and ask what is their letter grade that corresponds to that. Um, for this, this course and most university courses, uh, you'll see that on the syllabus on, on page two of our particular syllabus, it has the grade, uh, the uh, letter grade breakdown, but we're not going to be worrying about that uh, for, for this project. So that's problem. Uh, one question one. Uh, question two, we're going to uh, look at uh, hypothetically, if we take the same student that we had in problem one, so we take the same, the same uh, hypothetical class, the same scores for this student, and we're going to say, all right, if we assume this student 
uh, skips the final, does not take the final at all, what will their final grade be? And so instead of uh, and everything else is the same except the final exam score, here we're taking it as a zero. And then you add it all up and see what their final, final grade would be. Uh, question three, again, we're, we're uh, sticking with the same hypothetical situation, the same uh, student. And we're going to look at, all right, uh, if we want to say have the student get a 70% in this hypothetical class, then um, what score would they need to get on the final exam? And so what you're going to do is you're going to use the score you found on question, from question two, the, the previous number here, and um, you're going to use this, this uh, equation given to figure out what they need for their final exam if their goal is a 70%. Uh, so that's questions one through three, looking at this hypothetical situation um, for the this, this student in this class, uh, looking at how do we calculate a grade, how do we determine um, what, the grade, what the student's grade would be if they didn't take the final, or uh, what grade they need to get on the final if they, given these scores, if they want a 70% or higher uh, for the class. Uh, so any questions up to this point? And again, you could use either the audio or the, uh, or the chat, and I am keeping my eye on the chat in case there are any questions. And there is one more question here for this, which is related, but is a, a different than calculating grades. Okay. I'm not seeing any questions. Again, there, there is a little bit of a delay, so I'll keep my eye on chat. You might still be typing, that's fine. Um, but I'll move on in the CC question. So question four, uh, we're going to say, all right, in this, in this uh, hypothetical situation, let's suppose that this student took four courses, uh, math composition, uh, biology, and psychology, and got these letter grades. We wanna, uh, we wanna calculate what is the student's GPA for that semester. And so um, calculating a GPA, uh, each letter grade corresponds with a certain grade point uh, number. In this case, A minus is always a 3.7, B is always a 3, B plus is always a 3.3, A is always a 4.0. And there are more um, points associated with, with other grades as well, but that's, that's what we need for, for this particular course, uh, for this particular example, sorry. Um, so the first thing we need to do is calculate the points earned. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the grade points. In this case, let's look at math, that's 3.7, and times that by the number of credit hours the student, uh, that that course is for the student. So 3.7 times three will give us the 11.1. And we do that for all of the courses. So in this case, you'd have a three times a three, a 3.3 times three, and, and so on, add all, all of those together. Um, in this hypothetical situation, they're all at three credit hours. That's not always the case, I'm, as I'm sure you're aware, but that's uh, what you do. So you uh, multiply the grade points to the credit hours to get the points earned. Then you take uh, all of, the, all of the, the points earned for that semester, you add those together, that is going to be their total here. And then the overall GPA is the total divided by the sum of the credit hours for that semester. So in this case, the student had uh, four courses, each one was three credit hours, that's 12. So you're going to take that sum, divide by 12, and that is their GPA for that semester. Um, and that is how GPA is, is calculated in general, but this is again given this hypothetical situation for this student and these four classes with those grades, what is their GPA? Uh, so that is calculating that. Um, so any questions on uh, mini project for chapter three? So this is all kind of uh, grade related, looking at how do you calculate grade? What, uh, how can you determine what a student's grade would be if they didn't take the final? Um, how do you calculate uh, what a student needs to get on the final exam to get a 70% or higher in a, in a class uh, using the, the uh, breakdown of the grade by categories, in this case, like homework, many projects.
And then the, the second uh, last question is the uh, calculating the grade point average. Uh, go over then with the no exam. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, for question for question two, question two is going to be exactly the same as question one. The only difference is you're going to, hopefully this is the question. If not, we'll go to the next one as well. Um, the only difference is you're going to think of the final exam score as zero. So they didn't take the exam. What did they get? So that's going to give you a, a score here. So again, uh, this is exactly the same as question one, except we're taking the final exam score as a zero. Then for question three, you're going to take this, uh, this score that you get, and that's going to be 0.8 times the current grade here. And you're going to uh, plug in the goal grade is 70% and try and solve what you need for the final exam for the student to get a 70% in the class. Uh, so I'm, I think I might have to. I think I'll, I'll mention that in an email. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. If not, let me know. Um, are there any other questions for, for this mini project? And I'm not seeing any more. Again, you might still be typing, so I'll give it a minute or two. Well, so what you're going to do, what I, what I would do is I would um, take the final exam and use a variables like uh, capital F for final or E for exam, some, some letter. Uh, it's going to have right here, this first term is going to be your answer from question two, you'll have plus 0.2 times the final equals 70% equals uh, seven zero. We want that to be as a percent. Uh, and then you solve for the uh, missing thing for the final exam. Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I think, uh, I think I want you guys to run to the nearest decimal. Uh, yes, for questions one and two, that is correct. You figure out all of the scores, add them up, and that is your final grade, yes. Um, good, these are good questions. Uh, any other questions? Hopefully that clears up some material. While, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna take a little bit of some coffee. Uh, but if you have a question, please, please do either let me know in the audio or in chat. Okay. All right, so I'm not seeing any more. All right, okay, so for this first one, uh, we'll go over the first one in just one second. That is, that, okay, so let's, 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 uh, let's, let's go through this once, once more, that's all right. So for, for this first question, um, you're thinking of the final Grade as being as having a score between zero and one hundred. Well, this is actually to the tenths. Let's let's round to the tenths place. Round to one decimal place. Um, anyways, so uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to look at what is the weight of the category. In this case, the mini. The, let's pick on homework. Homework is ten percent, and their score was ninety five. So we're going to take ten percent of ninety five. And that will give us the points earned. So that will be 9.5. And we do that for each category. So mini projects is 10%. Their hypothetical score was 92. So we take 10% of 92. So we do 0 0.1 times 92. And it's going to be 9.2. So we put that here. You're going to do that for each one of these categories. And so you'll have uh, all of these points 
um, filled out in this table. That's the first step. Second step to find the final uh, grade, the overall grade, you take the sum of all of the categories. So 9.5 plus the 9.2 plus whatever you get for this project one plus whatever you get for project two, all the way down to the final exam, and that's going to be your overall grade. That will be a number between zero and 100, and that corresponds with their final grade percent. So that's problem one. Problem two uh, is the exact same thing, exact same question. The only difference is now we're thinking of the final exam as a zero. So this is going to be zero. Everything else will be the same. Uh, we're keeping the same scores as from question one. So everything else will be the same scores. We'll add all of that up, and that will be the grade if they did not take the final exam. So that's questions one and two. Question three, you're going to take uh, this 0.8 times current grade to this uh, entire first term, and I will uh, send out an email, and, and I think I'm gonna edit this to make that a little bit clearer, uh, but you're gonna take the 0.8 times the current grade. I'm gonna have to, yeah, I think I have to adjust that formula. This first, this first term is going to be the current grade. Then plus 0.2 times a variable, which we'll just say is the final exam score, could be x if you prefer to use x as your variable, equals 70, and you're going to solve for x, solve for that final grade. All right, and then I think that was hopefully all of the questions. I think those were all of the questions that I saw in chat. Uh, so that's, that's this mini project. Any other questions on this one? Uh, hopefully I cleared that up. Yeah, I, I do have to edit this. I'll, I'll edit that, um, make that more clear. That's a typo, it should not be 0.8 times current grade. It should be current grade plus 0.2 times final exam equals goal grade. I will, I will edit that. Okay, uh, I'm not seeing any other questions. Again, I'll keep my eye on chat. I know there's a little bit of a delay and you might be, it might be harder to type on depending on your device. So I'll keep my eye on chat in case there are any questions. Uh, but I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll move on to the next mini project. So we'll go to quizzes here. So the next one is the chapter four mini quiz. This is the other one that has been added. So let's click on that and see what we have going on here. Uh, question one, I want to take a, a little bit of time to go in more detail about, so we'll skip that for now. Uh, question two, you're looking at, you have a retired couple uh, is going to supplement their retirement income with monthly withdrawals of the interest earned on a retirement account, which has a balance of $200,000. So they have a retirement account that has $200,000 in it. Uh, for part A, you're going to look at if the fund earns interest monthly at an APR of 6%. Uh, which the couple always withdraws from the account. So they're always going to withdraw the interest. How much is generated in interest each month? Okay. So let me pull up uh, our digital paper here. And let's go over this problem. So uh, in this one, we're using our compound interest formula. So that is the amount A equals the principal times one plus the APR divided by N to the N times Y power. So we're using this formula. Um, remember that A is amount uh, after uh, Y years. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, that's a good observation there. Uh, P is the principal amount invested. Uh, APR is the annual percentage rate for the, the account. N is the number of compounding periods per year. And Y is the number of years. So let's go back to our mini project here. 
and read through it. Um, so here we have a balance of 200,000. That's our principal amount, that's P. Uh, the fund earns interest monthly, earns interest monthly. So our compounding um, period N is, uh, it compounds monthly, compounds each month. It earns interest each month, it earns interest monthly. So N is going to be 12 because there are 12 months per year. So the com number of compounding periods per year is 12. The APR is 6%. Again, we have to uh, convert that into a decimal. So that will be 0 0.06. We want that in its decimal form. And we want to know how much is generated each month. So let's write down what we know. So here we have the amount, or not the amount, the principal. is 20,000, the APR was 6%, so that's 0 0.06. The number of compounding periods is 12. This, this earns interest monthly, so it is compounded monthly. And let's go back to our mini project here. Uh, how, much is gen how much is generated in interest each month? So we want to know the number of uh, years y, how many years is one month? Uh, 200,000, it is, thank you, I will fix that. Thank you for, for catching that, 200,000, not 20,000. Good, um, so I'll fix that. Uh, but we wanna know how much is generated in interest each month, so what do we put for the time? Remember y here is in years. So one month is how many years? It is one twelfth of a year. So Y will be one twelfth. So this is going to give us the amount in the account that we have. Any questions on that first part? We're not done with the question yet. There's one more step, but that's the first bit. And I think I, did I, did I fix that? The principal amount, 200,000, yes, okay, 200,000. And again, thank you for, for catching that. That was definitely something that we wanna keep straight. Okay, so let's go back to the thing here. So that, that uh, plugging that into the formula, I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're not gonna do that as a class because we've done, done that before. I'm just going over the process here, how to, how to uh, calculate what we're looking for here. Um, but that's going to give us the amount that is in the account after a month. But we want to know how much interest is in the amount. This, is, this generates how much interest. So if you recall, um, and we did, we did a problem similar to this. Uh, this was in the last section of, of chapter, uh, chapter four, but the interest is equal to the amount minus the principal. So in this case, it's going to be whatever you get for that amount minus the 200,000, that's going to be your interest. And so that's going to be the answer there. So it's, it's one more step, you're looking for the interest. A is the total amount, but that includes interest. So the interest is the amount minus the principal. Okay, so let's go back to our was here. Uh, B, I'm thinking I might drop from the quiz. I'll let you know for sure. Um, for question three, you are looking at um, coming up with the total expenses, uh, the total monthly expenses for this, this particular family or individual. Uh, so you're just gonna follow, uh, follow through and, and look at um, what you have here with the expenses and uh, you, you notice we have this, this note here, we're assuming that four weeks is one month. Uh, it's going to calculate the monthly amount. Um, also as a note, before I forget, for each one of these questions, um, if there is a money amount, you want to include the, the amount of cents. So if, there is, if it comes out even like the $800, you're going to include the 0, .00, that's 
and in zero sense, so the point zero zero. So you want to always include you know, the uh, amount of sense. Okay, let's go back to question one. So um, question one on this on this quiz. Uh, this is the one that I was that I've been thinking about that I wanted to go over a little bit more in detail. Um, we know what to do if we're solving for a. We do this just as we have before, like in this previous example. But what if we wanted to solve for p, for the principal amount? Um, so what we're going to look at here, let's let's uh, look at look at this. So we're going to take our equation. So let's rewrite rewrite our equation. We have a. The amount equals the principal p times one plus apr divided by n is the number of compounding periods per year to the n times y power. Now, if we're solving for p, we're going to know what a is. This will be a number amount. We're going to know what the apr, n, and y is. So we'll know what this amount is. Let's say that um, we can plug this in on the right hand side that I have here into a calculator and we'll get some value. Let's use a square to represent that. Then what we're going to have is going to have this a equals principal times this square. So to get the principal amount, we just divide the amount a by the square here. Again, those will both be numbers. And we're not going to, we're not going to, um, you don't want to round, you want to use the answer key on your calculator. So that is what happens if you want to solve for p. And that's actually what we're going to be doing here with the first question. And there were also, so there were also a few questions in chapter four, uh, section 4b about this. So I'm extending the homework. Uh, before I told you to skip those, uh, I'm going to extend the homework for 4b as well as add some submissions because uh, I want you guys to go through those questions. I've, I've decided, was thinking about it over the weekend and decided I wanted you guys to, to learn how to do that. Um, so this first question, uh, suppose you would like to accrue $200,000 in a retirement account exactly 30 years from now by making a single deposit in, deposit in an account or fund that earns interest. And for part A, the account earns an APR of 5% compounded annually. So notice here, this 200,000, that's going to be the final amount, that's A. Uh, y is 30, we're looking at 30 years. For part A, the APR is 5%, and this is compounded annually, so n equals 1. So for part 1a, you're, you're solving for the principal invested. You're solving for p. So again, uh, we're going to do kind of that two-step process. We're going to solve, uh, put, put everything in the right-hand side of the equation to a into a calculator and divide the amount by that. Uh, part B, we're using the same, um, the same amount, uh, A is 200,000, the same number of years, Y equals 30, but here the APR is 4%, and it's compounded quarterly, so if it's compounded quarterly, what is N? N is going to be not 1, like it was in part A, but 4, exactly right, yes, 4. So let's go back to the digital paper. Uh, I want to go over an example. So, so remember, we're going to plug this, this piece into the calculator, this, this uh, piece I'm representing by a square, and then solve for the amount, uh, the principal that way. So I want to go over an example here. Uh, this is going to be different numbers from the quiz because I do want you to work this out on your own, but I do want to uh, give you an example on how this works out. Uh, so for this example, let's say that the amount we want is uh, 175,000. Uh, let's say that the APR is 5%. So in this case, that as a decimal is 0 0.05. Uh, let's say we want this compounded quarterly, so we're going to say that n is 4. And we'll keep the number of years as 30. So we want to solve for 
the principal we need to invest to get the 175,000 at the end of these 30 years. So the first thing we're going to do is plug everything into the, into the equation. So we have 175,000 equals P is what we're solving for times one plus the APR is 0 0.05 divided by N is four to the four times 30 power. Okay. So, so far, uh, not, not too different from what we did before, uh, from what we did last week. Um, instead of plugging this all into the calculator, we have to do it in kind of a two-step process. So first we want to solve for this piece, and I'm gonna call this piece uh, square, triangle, rectangle, whatever you wanna, whatever shape you wanna use here. Uh, so let's use our four function calculator, and I actually have that here. I believe, yes. Uh, so here's a, a four function scientific calculator. Uh, let me know, it, can you guys see the calculator all right or is, is, that, is that coming through? Just wanna make sure before I plug the numbers in. Yes, okay, excellent, good, okay. So uh, we're just doing the right hand side part. It's so going to do parentheses one plus the 0 0.05 divided by four parentheses to the power of this one has the white the x key parentheses four times 30 and then equals so we get this 4.4402 so on and so on um, now this you don't want to round uh, but I am going to write this in the digital paper just to make it uh, clear where this number is coming from. Um, we're going to use the answer key, but this is 4.44 and so on. Uh, so to solve for the principal amount, we're going to take the 175,000 divided by that number. So we go to our calculator and we do 175,000 divided by the answer and hit equals and we get uh, $39,412.52. So that is the amount of principal we need to invest to get the 175 at the end of the years. That's going, or at the end of the 30 years. So the amount of principal we need to invest is 39,000 four hundred and twelve dollars and fifty two cents okay uh, so that's what, what you are doing on question one for the quiz so question one parts a and b you're given uh, the amount a you're given the APR you're given the compounding period and you're giving the number of years why you need to solve for the principal P what is the amount you invest to get that at the end of of the, those, um, I think it's 30 years is used in both of those. Let's, let's double check. Uh, yeah, exactly 30 years for both of those. So that's question one. Any questions on, on that? So that one is a little bit different from what we have done, uh, but I was, I was thinking about it and I, I, I think it is something worth, worth knowing. So I wanted to include that. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so that's the uh, 4A mini, mini quiz. Uh, now the, the other thing that I wanted to go over today was uh, going to be the mini project five on Pearson. Uh, unfortunately, I was having some technical difficulties. Um, the Pearson does come with StatCrunch, but I cannot get that to work in the student view. So I'm going to have to um, contact technical support so I can walk you guys through that. Um, so we'll, we'll see what to do with that. So uh, for now, just ignore the chapter five and uh, we'll do the quizzes. So the the mini project quizzes, there were two that were added. We have the chapter three and the chapter four A mini quizzes. Those will be due this weekend. 
as well as the rest of the chapter four, I think there was, I think it was just uh, 4D homework that was left for this weekend. And I'm also going to um, uh, re, re open 4B and add some submissions so that you can work on uh, those other questions in that, in that homework where it was asking you for the uh, principal amount. And uh, with the stack crunch, I'm going to contact the Pearson support and figure out why that is not working. Uh, so let me, okay, um, I will have to double check that then. Uh, 4D should, well, it might have been, it might have been last week, but I thought I had set that, uh, set that as a sign to this week. I will, I will have to double check that. Um, if you don't, if you don't see that there by tonight, if you can send me an email and let me know. The, ho the homework, okay, so, uh, well, let me, let me double check. Hold on, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. Um, so for the chapter four, yeah, I'll have to, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to double check the homework should, should be available. Um, if the quiz was there, that's the reading check was the quiz. So that, that should be good, but the homework should also be available. So I will, I will have to double check that and make sure that the settings are correct. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and, and stop the share here. And are there any, any other questions on, on that, on what I covered, the mini project quizzes? Okay, so again, um, I, I had intended to go over the uh, mini project five as well in the stack crunch, but having some technical issues with that, so I'm gonna have to contact Pearson. We'll see what, what happens with that. Um, I'll, I'll send an email to let you guys know, uh, but I do want to go over stack crunch soon. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. I'm gonna stop the recording here.